to actually be in it, you know, words not even doing justice to explain the feeling of being in that position, but it's something special. And um, I just wish that, you know, the inspiration that he gave to me, that I'm that living inspiration to that next kid. And, you know, my work ethic with whatever I'm doing right now could uh, maximize what Jackie did. And what I've done right now is only not even half of what he's done. So I have a long way to go. You know? so I just want to be living with inspiration. That's what it's about. That's what real legacy is about. And Jackie did in that manner. And you know, it's my respect. It's, it's, it's in my power. It's in my responsibility to, to continue that. How did you come to wear number 42? Um, so uh, in high school, I, uh, I was like, man, what's a good number I can wear that's, you know, I didn't want a number that everyone had worn before, you know, number one, Jimmy had worn number one at John Curtis. Uh, so I didn't want like that or anything. I'm like, what, what can I find a number where I can make it out of something? And I just chose 42, you know, I thought, like, it's, it's whatever. So, you know, I dislocated my ankle in that number, but I also had, you know, a lot of attention in that number for us, you know colleges on the recruitment or whatever and seeing my talent. So I just stayed with the number. It was something where, you know, I feel like it's part of me that that, that started an establishment and uh, it's still carrying on today. So you know if I could wear it for the rest of my career, I would. But you know, I'm gonna more with that swagger like you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> for the next five months with uh, full pride. You had some fun last summer when there was that fire near San Bernardino about wanting the wind to blow it over so you guys would get out of practice. Uh, how do you feel about not having to worry about going out to San Bernardino? Yeah, it's a blessing, man. I want to shit Coach Morahan and take him out on a date. Because, man, San Bernardino is not, it's not something you enjoy. Like, you love football, but whenever someone tries to make your passion you know, miserable, it just makes things everything. Water, but you know, he's trying to build me the toughness or whatever it is, and they did in some aspects. But uh, you know, for the longevity of things, like man, it was just it was aggravating to me. I'm like, man, what are you getting done? Like, I, I don't want, I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to talk to my teammates. It's like, to travel from where you stayed at to the to the field it was ridiculous. You had to leave like 30 minutes early just to get to the just to get to the field. And it was like just too much. So. When NCAA banned two days, and he was like, hey, we're not going to San Bernardino? I was like, man, Coach Moore is a happy man right now, or whatever it is. So, yeah, the new facility is up right now. Uh, have you seen it? So, yeah, I actually have. Uh, the, the fields are done. Uh, the maintenance and stuff is pretty much done for the most part. So uh, we get going in a couple of weeks. So I'm excited. Have you got a chance to like, run up and down that field and meet your No, no, they won't, they won't let us. Yeah, they're still, they're still working on it. I think they put like a little black little spikes on it or whatever it is, but it's beautiful. I advise you guys to go see it pretty soon before we get in it. Oh, y'all don't get uh, access? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you get to sign in, I think. Now, right? It's like, you get a tour? Don't you get a tour? I hope so. It's like a front desk. I think, there's a, do I think there's a donor event on the first. Oh, there's donor a front desk. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a family uh, welcome that Coach Warren is, uh, is hosting with the, the 30th, I believe. Maybe you guys can come in then. That's your only shot, so you better. <laughs> if you want to, uh, yeah, you're my cousin, you're my uncle, this is my brother. <laughs> yeah. How, how does fan support and the atmosphere at the Rose Bowl make a difference in your play, or does it? Um, when they, like, so I know I'm there as a fan, right, right. and I'm screaming and yelling, uh -huh. and I know I can feel a difference when there's 60,000 and when there's 75,000, when it's up and when it's down. How does it feel to you? I think it's crazy that you know, y'all found it corny that Josh Rosen made the comment about uh, texting and them. It's just yes. like, what, what did he say? Oh, yeah. after, after 50,000, 50, it's, it's just loud. loud. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just. It's, just, it's all the same. It's, it's, it, it, it is, like, literally. Like, 105,000 compared to 80,000, it pretty much sounds the same. In, in terms of, you gotta understand what he was saying when he said that. And I, and I relate, I laugh because like people just don't understand what he was saying when he said that. You know? Because uh, literally whenever you're in a game, whenever it's game day, you block out all that stuff. You block out so much. Like you literally have to set your mind to a level to where you block out literally everything. Whenever it's game day, I don't hear nothing. Whenever my daughter on the floor, so yeah, yeah. they're booing, cheering, you not, I mean, you you hear it like little snippets, but you, the second you buy into that, you, you lose your zone. You're right. And you don't want to ever lose your zone. So I think the most part, you know, it, it do sound. It, it does sound the same. You know, like a and M. How many people was there? Like 105,000. But it didn't feel like. It felt like at the Rose Bowl. It, felt, it feels like when we play SC at home. You know, it sounds the same. You know, I don't hear anything. I just. I just see. I just see everything.
Bob's said she gets up on the chair and screams when you get an interception. She do. Oh voice. my goodness, man. <laughs> I wish I could like someone who just record her the entire game because she'd be the most. She'd be up on the chair. She'd probably be on somebody's back, yelling and hollering. You know, but yeah, man, she's a she's a loving mom. I've been teaching middle school for 17 years, and I come across a lot of budding athletes. And one of the things I hear a lot from them is, I don't need to study or do my homework, I'm just going to play football. What would you tell them? You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I don't know. Uh, I've never been raised that way, though. You know, I've always right. been raised that, you know. Clearly because you're at UCLA. Not even that. I could have went to, you know, I don't know, Harvard or I could went to Syracuse or whatever it is. It wasn't about so much, you know, the school I went to. It was just how I was raised as a kid. You know, I was raised on certain principles and uh, a certain morality to where, uh, you know, your education and your character comes first. And, you know, whatever you choose to do for a passion, you know, that, that's, just, that's just part of it. And you just you just balance those things. You know, if you want to be uh, the superstar on the team, be the superstar person in the, in the meeting, be the superstar person in the class. Raise your hand every time every time you get an opportunity. You, know, that's, you, you maintain that same level of of enthusiasm and, 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 and drive in everything you do. And I feel like, you know, for guys that don't do that, man, you're, you're selling yourself short. You know, you're selling yourself short of your of, of your career, of your life. And you're selling yourself short of you know the examples to the future generations. No problem. I talked to uh, Miles Jack and uh, Eric Hendricks uh -huh. recently, and they both said that they, they know you. Right. How much pride do you have in what they're going to do yes. and kind of the example they've set for you at linebacker, and how much pride there is in that position? It's a lot of pride, man. It's all for you. And I said, not too many people get to say that. So it may Penn State or LSU may claim they're LBU, but we are statistically LBU. You know, so uh, <laughs> um, it means a lot, man. You know, those guys, uh, what I found out when I was very, you know, a young buck in my career when I was a freshman in college is uh, I always studied those guys. Miles is totally different than EK. Totally, totally different. Like the way Miles structure. EK is a total opposite. It's still positive, but it's just different. You know, and I just try to grab one or two things from them that they do well and just apply it and implement it to my life, and, you know, to my game. And I think it's, uh, it's elevated because of learning through those guys. You know, and Rob Thomas or whatever, who still is around. You know, Rob Thomas who plays in the years back, plays for the, Ram played for the Rams for like eight years or whatever, played at UCLA. Um, Roman Pfeiffer, all those guys, uh, Anthony Barr, all those guys, they, all, they always carry this, you know, this, this, this aura about themselves that, um, you know, just, just a positive way of going about handling the business. And I always respected them that, you know, respected them the most for that. And it was, if you, if you ever seen them on the football field, yeah, they was good football players, but they was greater men. You know, if you had a conversation with them, they were great people. And no matter how much success or how much money it comes their way, you know, that, that doesn't matter. They still remain the same guy. You know, EK still calls me, you know, asks me, how am I doing? You know, if, something's not wrong, if something's not right, you know, he notices it, he'll call me. Like, what's wrong? What's going on? You know, Miles, uh, you know, he said, Kenny, look, we are we, we laid off of you, but stay away from this, stay away from that. You know, stay focused, continue to, continue to be who you are. And that's what, that's what I follow, you know, whenever you have a, like I said, you know, for the, the people that said that whatever about they're here just for football, you know, education is whatever, how do you cripple the, the young guys? How do you cripple the young, younger generations like that? You know, you just you sell, your, you, you sell yourself short, but you're also selling the younger ones behind you short. You know, you don't do that. But if you're a positive role model, and you go about handling things the right way, I feel like the generations after you, that, that is perpetuated. And I feel like with LBU, that's why you know it deserves we deserve to be LBU because that that happens. You know, those guys perpetuate the character and the on the field responsibility to to have the young guys behind them like myself and Josh Woods and you know the upcoming stars at linebacker to uh, to to copy that and take it with them you know forever. But not just on the football level, but in their whole entire life. You know, try to create that balance. Yesterday, the uh, Boston University came out with their. CTE study that showed that 110 out of 111 NFL players uh, that donated their brains had CTE, and they said it was something like 87 percent of, of former players across the board, including high school and college. How much does that concern you as a player? Um, <laughs> you're the second person to ask you that. Uh, 
How recent were the players? Like, were they very old? And well, they had the the, the they were these were players who donated their brains to the study. <laughs> okay. Um, about eighty seven. It was high school, college, NFL, CFL, and semi pro. Eighty seven percent of the of, of the subjects who had donated their brains had CTE. Does it concern you as a football player that sometime down the line that that's going to affect you? So if uh, uh, um, yeah. um, let's say you try to pursue a career in uh, being a police officer, being a lawyer, or whatever, a high risk job, right? Um, don't you tell yourself that you want to do that? I say yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like with anything, you know, you set out the decisions you make. As far as this is what I want to do, this is what I don't want to do, and this is what I can't tolerate. And it's upon you and your sovereignty to figure that out. You know, you'll figure it out once you get tired of. You know. <laughs> See, I know I played four years in high school, right? And uh, and that's as far as I went. I wasn't good enough to, to play in college, right, right. and it scares it scares the bejesus out of me that that. Something that I did you know, 30 years ago in high school could affect me now. Right. Well, or sometime that's, how, down the road. that's how you look at it. For me, I just think that uh, you know, it's about how you go about doing things. You know, those people have CTEs from. I'm sure, I heard that CTEs comes from not about concussions, but the amount of impacts to the head. But you know, it's, it all goes down to each and every day when you practice and they have games. How are you tackling? Well, you even to, you? even even Brian Price, mm -hmm. who played from 2007 to 2010, there's an absolutely awful video out there showing him literally going through the glass, do a thick glass door of a store, like it's an offensive lineman with a quarterback on the other side. Um, it, was, it came out it came out within the last couple of days. But who, but who, He's 28 years old. But who told him to do that? Nobody. That's just it. Nobody. Nobody told him. He doesn't. He, he has got no recollection of the event at all. But he did it. He did it. There's video of him doing he want, it. He wanted to do it, though, right? He had. He has no recollection of, of doing it. So whether he wanted to do it or not, you can't really tell that that this was something he wanted to do. I just think that man, you uh, whenever you playing a game of football, uh, there's a way you can go about protecting your safety. And I practice that each and every day, each and every practice, each and every game. I'm not trying to be the entertainment guy that's going to knock you out and try to get the whole crowd to say boo and, you know, because I took a cheap shot at your head and purposely wanted to hurt you. That's never my intentions. I never try to hurt another human being. You know, as serious as you might take football, you can't try to, you know, try to harm somebody because that's not why you play the game. You play the game for love and passion and, you know, to protect those guys. You might not know them, but to protect them because you will want the same thing as an issue. So. I think, you know, period is that, you know, we, I feel like we just, if anything, you know, to, you know, if that's, that's, if that's with the studies, how do we protect, you know, protect these going towards the future? And I think the NFL, the NCAA has done a great, a great job of, you know, regulating you know, laws and rules to where, you know, like the targeting thing or whatever it was. I was, I was a candidate who got ruled off with targeting, you know, didn't, didn't really throw my body into the guy or whatever, but. Just the, you know, just the way I looked, it looked like it was targeting, so I got released by the, after the fifth play of the game. I didn't like it, but, I, you know, I didn't like it, but, you know, because I had, like, one tackle, I believe, or whatever. But I learned from that experience, you know. I learned that, hey, listen, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I need to calm it down a little bit, you know, not take it too serious and just, just make a regular tackle. You know, maybe that's, that's, that's for the convenience of the, of the time. You know? I want to play this game for a long time. So I can't be throwing my body around like it's a, it's a car, it's like a, a, a bumper car, whatever it is. I can't do that. If, I, if, my, if my health and my safety is the most important thing at the end of the day, which keeps me, keeps me at peace, regardless if I love football or not, you know, I have to look out for that. And I feel like it's, you know, especially as a linebacker, that's, that's what I do. You know? I go a certain my way of, of tackling people. I'm not trying to hurt you. you know? I'm just trying to do my job. It's 2.30. Kenny, go.